I woke up to the phone ringing and answered the phone. Still half asleep, the voice on the other end roughly told me that they needed to speak to my mom urgently. I went to my mom's room and woke her up and told her she had a phone call. My mom got on the phone and spoke to the person on the other line for about five to ten minutes. Once she hung up, she told my brother and I to get dressed and ready for school immediately, while she herself got ready for the day and prepared my sister as well. The voice on the other end of the phone had told my mom that my dad had suffered yet another stroke and now had been moved to the intensive care unit of the hospital. We got ready and left. While we were getting ready, my mom also called our school teacher and told her that we would be coming early um, and if she could come and watch over my brother and I before anyone else arrived. My mom took my sister to a family friend's house and we waited at the school until the teacher arrived. Once she arrived, we sat uh, in her classroom until other students came and then we went and played with them. During school, I talked to my friends and hung out with them, some of them who had parents in the medical profession who told, uh, told me that my dad was on a respirator. And while I didn't know what that was, it sure did sound scary to me. So I began crying and my teacher took me into an office and told me that a respirator was just something to help my dad breathe and not necessarily a bad thing. I was supposed to console with that and left and went back to school. That day, my mom and my grandma sat in the ICU room with my dad and watched as he fought to regain consciousness and come out of his coma. On March 16th of the year 2000, the doctors officially pronounced my dad brain dead and a social worker was assigned to our family's case. The social worker instructed my mom that she should bring my brother, sister, and I to the ICU unit and say goodbye to my dad. My mom told us that, that night that we would be going to the seventh floor the next day to say goodbye. We already knew from a couple weeks prior that we weren't allowed on the seventh floor because one time when we were visiting my dad and leaving, my sister asked if we could ever go to floor seven because that was her favorite, her favorite number at the time. My mom said we couldn't because that was a floor that wasn't allowed for children under the age of 14 and we also didn't want to go there because patients there were really, really sick. The next, that day, on March 17th, we got up and went to the hospital really early in the morning. We were free to move about the floor as we pleased. We sat in the lobby, went through the floor, went into the room, came back out to the lobby. The nurses basically let us do whatever we really wanted, as long as we were quiet. I remember spending most of the day watching TV in the lobby and watching newscasters interview people about how they were going to spend their St. Patrick's Day evening. The nurses also brought us cookies and crackers and juice, and we got to just hang out. I remember going in and talking to my dad and telling him the, how I had missed him and how I loved him and remember looking at all the machines and just thinking like how scary they were. Like there was heart monitors, respirators, blood pressure, all kinds of stuff that I had never seen before. Around 2 or 3 p.m. that day, our family and friends gathered and we said a final farewell together. We sang songs and said prayers and people shared stories about my dad and what they remembered about him. After we were done, after what felt like hours, but was probably only a few minutes, a family friend took me and my brother and my sister to her house so that my mom could make the funeral arrangements. I remember spending the rest of the day with her and eating dinner and spending time with their family trying to forget about what had happened. But unfortunately, by the time that it was time for me to go to bed, I just began crying uncontrollably because I realized that this was the worst day of my life. But this has also made me who I am, and those care and compassions from the nursing staff has made me decide to pursue a career in nursing.